The last thing that I want to talk about then is naming these or denoting, denoting them. Okay. I use this term because it shows up in uh, some of your homework assignments. How do you denote uh, this particular element? Denote just means how do you name it? Okay. So when you're naming a point, all you do is you represent it by the capital letter that the point is represented by. So if you have point B down here, okay, you have points A and B, it's just the capital letters themselves. Okay. We talked about in order to name a line, you need two points. Okay. Two points will determine one distinct line. When you name a line, you pick any two points on it in any order and you draw an arrowhead, a double-sided arrowhead over those two points. Okay, now if I gave you a third point or fourth or fifth or whatever, a point, another point inside, you still only use two points. You use the minimum number of points to determine that element. So a line can be determined with two points. So we could also call this CE or EC. And then what would be another way that we could name this? Is there another combination of two points on that line? Thus. Okay, so ED or DE. Okay, so these would be the different ways. Now, in addition to the double-sided arrow over the top of the points, you can also name lines with subscripts. So you can take L to represent line and do a subscript of all those different combinations. Okay, so these are all different ways to name the line represented above. Okay, in addition to this, you may also find that you have a lowercase cursive letter to represent a line. If that's the case, you just use the cursive letter. That will also represent the line. It's usually in the middle of the alphabet. It's usually around K, L, M, N are the main ones. And, and you can also, you might see capital L with a subscripted number. And that would be another way to represent this line. So those would be the different ways that you can uh, name or denote a line. So if you need one point to determine a point, two points to determine a line, how many points do you think you need to determine a plane? Three. Okay, so if we take, let's take the next set of points, F, G, and H. Okay. When you name a plane, you have to use three points, but they have to have a specific relationship. They cannot be in the same straight line. And the reason for that is, if I gave you, let's say, point I right here, okay. would points F, I, and G designate this one brown plane from any others? And what if I took another plane and I extended it through so they intersected here? Would this red plane still contain the points F, I, and G? Yeah, so does it distinctly name the brown plane? No. So in order to name a plane, you do have to make sure that the points that you use to name it, the three points, do not fall in the same straight line. And you'd use the word plane and then just pick any combination of three points that do not fall in the same straight line. So plane FGH, plane FHG, plane GHF, plane GFH, and so on. You can see that there's a number of different combinations. Could we take FIH? Would that denote or name this plane? FIH? Yeah. What about GHI? Yeah, so again, any of those combinations would work. Okay. You can also name a plane using a cursive letter. And it's going to be a capital letter. And most of the time, again, it sort of falls toward the end of the alphabet generally. Okay, but this would be an example. Plane R can also represent that element. All 
right, so these are, these are the undefined terms of geometry. These are the building blocks of geometry. Uh, I can guarantee you that is a question on the final, which I hope everybody gets right, just identifying them. The major confusion comes when I add the final term that's, not, that's contained in this section, but it's not one of the building blocks. So before I get to that term, are there any questions on these building blocks of geometry? How to name them, how to represent them, how to define them? The final term that's included in this section is simply used because, or introduced because, it extends the pattern here. So point is zero dimensions, line has one dimension, plane has two dimensions. So when we deal with three dimensions, we're dealing with space. Okay, space is defined as the set of all points that exist. And so this kind of comes, if you take a plane and you infinitely stack planes on top of one another, it's that object that you create is going to contain the, all points that exist. Okay. So again, theoretically, it's the set of all points that exist, and it has three dimensions. Okay. It has the length, width, and now it has depth or thickness. And if you were going to represent space, it would be represented like that little cube that I drew, okay, where, again, even though the cube itself has specific boundaries, okay, it's really kind of extending in all directions infinitely. Okay. And so you'll see and you'll, in the next section, we'll talk more about some 3D representations of planes intersecting or these elements intersecting. But right now, I just wanted to introduce it. But is space considered one of the building blocks? No. Okay. 